Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you on this Friday. Hope everybody has had an unbelievable week. No matter where you are in your journey, know that if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. Uh, I'm not going to be long. I have an actual interview. Um, um, and man, less than 30 minutes, but I did want to drop in on you um, before um, the interview process starts. I'm being interviewed on a couple of different topics. Um, and I'll share it with you guys uh, as soon as it's made available to me. But in the meantime, look, someone asked me, what do you do uh, with critics? Now, the first thing I'm going to do is because I have a very short period of time here is I'm going to uh, be very uh, succinct as, uh, in delivering my message. Normally, I like to sort of talk things out and uh, hash things out to make sure that what I'm saying is clear. But uh, I'm pretty sure you guys will be able to get what I'm what I'm saying here. Look, there are two types of criticism. There's constructive criticism and there's destructive criticism. It's that simple. Uh, there's no gray ground. There's no gray area. There's no anything else. Either a person is being constructive. Hey, Kim. Hey, how's everything going? Look, uh, if I missed you on Monday, it was because we weren't we weren't uh, we weren't in town. Uh, I do apologize for that. Look, uh, criticism is either constructive or it's not or it's destructive. There's no gray area. If a person isn't being constructive, no matter how well intended they are, they're being destructive. You need to recognize the difference. Constructive criticism is normally easy to easy to find. Uh, it may not be easy to receive because some of us aren't uh, at a place where we're thick skinned enough to be corrected. And that's something you've got to work on. So constructive criticism should be easy to identify because because normally a person who really cares about you and is, is criticizing you or critiquing you more more accurately critiquing you is critiquing you because they see some things that they think if you work on this if you change this if you do this you're going to actually come up with better results and so they will normally first of all you will know because their relationship with you is one of encouragement one of celebration they celebrate you when you win they encourage you to be your best self they challenge you they hold you accountable so there's this relationship with them that says i want the best for you so when they do come to you and say hey right now your slip is hanging right now you're not doing this the way it should be done right now you're not on your a game it's always about getting you to be better and they will always acknowledge the parts of you that are shining. They'll come and say, man, when you're doing this, you're killing it. When you're doing that, you're killing it. But over here right now, this part right here, you probably want to do this or that's not the way to do it. But hey, over here, you're killing it. They're going to they're gonna show you that they're aware of you. They're going to show you that they're into you, that they believe in you. So you'll have a, first of all, you have a history and relationship with them that says, man, they've been there for me. They've always came to me and they gave me their best. When I'm winning, they're celebrating me. When I'm down, they're there to comfort me, uh, but they're always pushing me to the limits. That's going to be where your constructive criticism comes from. You need that. You need people who are going to be honest with you. What I have never wanted yes men around me. And what a yes man is, is somebody that no matter what you do, because they because they benefit by being in your presence of being in your circle, they tell you it's cool. They never ever come out and say, "Man, you think you should do that? You really think you should, man?" And I, you need somebody to say, "Man, that was that that wasn't cool. That that's that wasn't what was up. You, you shouldn't have done that." Uh, you need that type of person. You need somebody that's going to be honest with you. Somebody that's not afraid to tell you the truth. Uh, that's constructive criticism. Somebody that's going to come to you and say, "Hey, man, that wasn't cool." You need to do this. You need to do it. You need to go back and apologize. Whatever the situation is, they're going to be honest with you. But their ultimate desire for you is that you excel and you will see it. You will feel it in their energy. Uh, now, let's be honest. Most of your critiquing and criticism are going to come from people who have no desire for you to do better. They're going to come from people who are naturally negative. They're going to come from people who have already given up on doing anything exceptional, extraordinary, and phenomenal. They're going to come from people who make it their 
life's work to be negative, to tell you why you're going to fail, to tell you what's wrong with you, to tear you down. What you got to understand, there is a large portion of the population that haven't healed from things that have caused them pain suffering and struggling and they haven't healed from their failures and their setbacks they haven't put in the work and so in order for them to feel good about themselves they have to tear down other people in order to feel good uh this is is a, is a subconscious dynamic most of them don't even realize they're doing it most of them think they're just they're, they they are keeping it real they're keeping it 100 they're just being brutally honest it's so many different ways that they put it under guise to make it seem like it's okay but the bottom line is if it's not done in a way that can be received, if it's not done in a way that actually elevates, pushes and challenges someone to rise, if it's done in a way that definitely feels like an attack, it does, intent doesn't matter. And, and so what you have to understand is there are a bunch of people out there that simply are out there to risk, uh, uh, redirect you, misdirect you and distract you. They are there to bring negative energy. How do you deal with those people? Here's how you deal with those people. You don't. You cannot be in my circle with negativity. I did not say you could not be in my circle uh, as, a, as a point of accountability. I want you in my circle if you're going to call me uh, on things that I'm, I'm slacking on. I want you in my circle if you are a great advisor. I want you in my circle if you are at a higher level than me and you can direct me, counsel me, teach me. I need you. But if you're just somebody that's in my circle to surrender and contribute your random opinion about what's going on and that opinion is never positive, that nigger, that opinion is never um hopeful. It is never anticipating something better. It's always a negative thing. You don't deserve to be in my circle. You're not someone I'm going to deal with. I'm not going to give you your, your, your statements, your opinions, and your contributions, any gravity in my life because they have no positive intent. They have no way of helping. You are not welcome. You've got to learn how to cut people off. And you've got to learn how to ignore people. The thing is, you're not out there to earn the approbation and approval of everyone. You're not out there to earn the acceptance of everyone. You're out there to go out and make something happen. You're out there to go out there and do something that hasn't been done. Now, here's the thing you've got to understand. When you're talking about doing something that has not been done, you're going to have a bunch of people who haven't done it trying to tell you it can't be done. That's just simple. When you're trying to do something that's next level, everybody that's on the current level is going to look at it and say it can't be done because if they thought it could be done, they would already be at the next level. So you would what you've got to understand is you're actually functioning as a conviction against their mediocrity. Do you get what I'm saying? The reason why there's a crab in the bucket mentality when you're trying to climb out of the box, when you're trying to climb out of the, the, the current state or the status quo and you're trying to do something remarkable and exceptional and extraordinary. The reason that most people in the box are doing things to pull you back in has absolutely nothing to do with you most of the time. Most of the time it has everything to do with them. What am I saying? I'm saying that when you're in a box with a bunch of people, and that box could be a box of generational poverty. It could be a box of generational mental health issues. It could be a box of uh, 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 academic underachievement where no one has ever graduated high school or no one has ever gone to college, whatever it is. And no one's ever started a business. And, and any of these boxes that you come from, that you are part of. And in that box, everybody's sharing their story. Man, uh, I grew up like this, and when we when I grew up, we didn't have this, and when I grew up, we didn't have that, and when I grew up, I was, I was abused at this point in time. I went through, so everybody's got their story, and their story is their justification for not excelling. And so they got a bunch of people telling their story and everybody's got some things in common. And so they have convinced each other that it's okay to be in the box. 
Now, when you make up in your mind, you know what? I don't want to be in the box anymore. I want to do something exceptional. I want to do something extraordinary. I want to do something phenomenal. I'm going to climb out of the box. Guess what happens? If you get out of that box, you convict everybody in it that their stories that they've been telling for why they can't get out is absolute BS. So guess what happens? Everybody says they can't get out because once they get out, my story is no longer legitimate. My excuse is no longer legitimate. The once somebody who is gone, especially if you've been through something more than they have, especially if you've been through some of the things that they've been through and you've been through worse and you're climbing out, you totally destroy their excuses for not making it, their excuses for not coming out. They've got to find a way to rationalize why they're there. You can't get out of that box. So they start telling you, you're, you're crazy, you're stupid, you're unrealistic. Your job isn't to listen to them. Your job is to listen to your heart. Your job is to connect to your purpose. Your job is to look at all the other people who have and ask yourself what makes them different than me. Your job is to sit up and say, I wasn't born to be mediocre. I wasn't born to be average. There's something inside of me that's yearning for greatness. I'm going to answer the call of greatness. I'm going to answer the call to rise to the challenge of being the best I can be. I hear a phenomenal calling in my life, and I'm going to rise up, and I'm going to live in that calling. I'm not going to pay attention to the random opinions of minimal-minded people who have decided they're not going to pursue anything beyond what is average. You can't listen to the naysayers. You can't listen to the ones who whisper the sweet nothings of negativity in your ear. You got to find somebody that inspires you, find somebody that challenges you, find somebody that, that is willing to get behind you and give you the push you need, find somebody that's going to hold you accountable. But don't listen to those naysayers. That's how you handle criticism. You find out if it's constructive, if it's lifting me, if it's giving me some advice and some information I need to be better, I need to listen. If it's celebrating me, but saying there's something better, I need to listen. If it's calling me to wake up a little early to do a little bit more, if it's telling me I'm being a little too lazy and I need to get more work done, you need to listen. But if it's telling me I can't do it, if it's telling me I'm wishful thinking, if it's telling me that I'm being a little hearty, I don't want to hear it. Why? Because that's something trying to shrink me back into the box. Man, I wish I had more time. But I think that you guys got what I was trying to say. You have to selectively and critically cultivate your circle. It's got to be an exclusive environment. Not everybody's welcome. Those in your periphery have to be able to bring something to the table. They have to be able to pour into you as well as receive from you. They have to be willing to encourage you as well as be encouraged by you. They have to be willing to be headed in the same direction. Everybody that you care about can't be in your circle because everybody that you care about don't care about you. Everybody that you care about don't have the capacity to be a blessing at any given moment. Now, you can bless them from a distance. You can do things for them from a distance. You can drop some seeds on them, whether it's words of encouragement, whether it's financial help or whatever, but you do it from a distance. You can't be in my environment with that negative energy. I will not allow it. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get ready for what I've got to do for this interview, which I'm excited about. Um, and um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, there are some resources there. Look, if you haven't gotten um, signed up for the 30-day uh, uh, holistic transformation, uh, email me at... Well, email the support team at life uh, change at Rick Wallace PhD dot link. Uh, I put it in the uh, thing, but email me uh, if you haven't uh, enrolled in that. That's a chance to get your 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 whole thing off on a great on a great note. Uh, email 
that address and before the end of the day you will receive a response on how you can enroll and you will be working directly with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis for four weeks definitely sign up there's so much that you can do beyond what you're doing right now and i want to get you guys started on that note i'm gonna get off and get ready for my uh interview once that interview is done and they get the information me i'm gonna share it with you i'm gonna be talking about some pretty uh radical and controversial topics uh but definitely i think it's something that you guys might want to hear on that note i'm out of here you guys have a great day as i always say i'm going to live my life on full so that when i leave this place i die on e i'm challenging you to do the same thing have a great one uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.